Hi guys, time to do an everyday carry pocket dump. So I have my keys, I have my little thing to carry my cards, pass keys and whatever it is, and snooze, which is the Swedish wet tobacco. If you ever get a chance, try it, you're gonna throw up anyway, and my phone. So, for example, this would not be allowed. Very, very naughty. You're probably gonna kill a whole school bus full of children if you carry this. And uh, a handgun, very much not allowed. So it didn't always used to be like this in Sweden. Uh, we have the knife law to thank for this not being allowed. Uh, it's actually pretty stupid. <clears throat> it's a catch-all law, the knife law. I'm gonna translate it for you. Knives, other stab and cut weapons and other, other things used, to, used as weapons with a crime against lives, life and health cannot be held at public places in schoolyards or in a vehicle. It is allowed to use a knife if you need it for work basically. So if you're a carpenter you can have like a carpenter's knife or something. But uh, I have heard that uh, criminals ha have uh, dressed up as a <laughs> carpenter and carried a knife and uh, they have been prosecuted for that. I haven't heard about an actual carpenter uh, going down for a knife or something. Also, uh, I think it was last year a hunter had a knife in his uh, driver's side door and he was going out uh, hunting. And he was prosecuted for having a knife in the car when he was going hunting. So that's the level of stupid. But it gets worse because uh, the catch-all law says that any kind of device used offensively is prohibited. So basically, clearly could tell me that my keys are an offensive device. <laughs> uh, it, all, it all depends on uh, the purpose. So now that I've made this video and if the police sees that I did this with my keys, <laughs> they could say that I have an intent to defend myself and therefore it's not allowed for me to have keys. It wouldn't fucking surprise me if they did something like that. Also this is the offensive tin of snooze, very dangerous. And this brick of a foam, if I throw it really hard at someone they might get a bruise. Everything is now illegal here. <laughs> So what about handguns? Actually, I checked the laws and uh, I checked the law in 1993 and uh, nowadays we have a law that says you can only uh, have, for example, a gun in your car stored safely with a bolt, well, safely and under your care to and from the shooting range, for example. But uh, in 1993, there was no such law <laughs> in the books. So you could carry a handgun on your person. You couldn't carry a knife, but you could carry a handgun. <clears throat> and uh, uh, as the myth goes, there was this giant asshole in one of the really upscale bars in Stockholm who carried a 357 Magnum. And uh, he was drunk and wanted to show off in the men's bathroom. And obviously some idiot shot a 357 slug through all the toilets. No one got hurt, but the law got changed. That's the story anyway. So I don't think it's as much a story about how idiots ruin it for all of us, as much as it is uh, overreaching politicians that did not know that people were allowed to carry handguns. And when they found out about it, they wanted to ban it immediately because they're afraid of the people. Uh, same thing, there was this uh, pistol shooter that had licenses for like 15 handguns or whatever. 
a lot of handguns anyway. And uh, there was headlines in the, the, the usual socialist papers saying, oh, why is it allowed to have that many handguns? So, so they made it so you can't have that many handguns anymore because politicians. And now it's a pain in the ass to get more than four handguns in Sweden and you have to renew the license every five years and uh, you have to send in uh, like results from competitions and it's not stated in law that you have to do this the police just make shit up to be able to deny licenses basically so uh, they say that you need to have more comp results from competitions to motivate your need for a handgun and uh, if you send them a lot of results they say, oh, well, you need one more result. This is not enough. And if you manage to find one more result, they're going to say, well, you need two more results. And you see where I'm going with this. It's a slippery slope, and the agenda is to ban all firearms. And that's how you do it. Now I'm going to put this really dangerous object away before it stabs me. Yeah, so that's the way it is in Sweden. But on paper, we actually have really good self-defense laws. Uh, lagen om nödvärn. The, the law of self-defense in Sweden says you have a lot of space to defend yourself and defend your home. And if someone is running away with your TV or something, you're allowed to use violence to get it back. Uh, the law is very vague. Uh, it says you can use as much violence as the situation demands if you're in fear of your life, someone is running towards you with a knife, you're allowed to shoot them in the face basically, according to the law. Uh, and as you all know, the law might say one thing, but uh, in practice it's not really that easy. So I have an example, there, there's a really good report on how this law works in Sweden, and it's there's no clear rules, there's no way that the courts interpret anything. But uh, this one example is two criminals is going to meet up because they're, they have some difficulties, I guess, criminal things, selling drugs, or I don't know. They have a beef, I think it's called. <laughs> so both have knives, knives on them. And one guy gets stabbed in the chest, he gets a punctured lung. This is a fatal stab wound if it didn't get treatment. And uh, he draws his knife and he holds the other guy's knife arm while he stabs him. And uh, he, he, he does this repeatedly and he stops only when the other guy goes away. And then he runs away the other direction. So uh, in principle he stabs him the number of times it takes for that other guy to get the fuck away. But the court reasoned that he should just have run away after he got his fatal stab wound, while the other guy was swinging at him, he should just run away. That's not how it works. Anyone who knows anything about anything knows that if you get stabbed, you, you're, not, you, you're only going to get stabbed in your back if you try to run away. If you have a knife, defend yourself. If you have a handgun, shoot him. A knife is a very dangerous object if someone is trying to kill you. And this guy would have succeeded if not the other guy managed to Basically, ah oh, well, the, I didn't mention it. The, the first attacker died from stab wounds to his neck or something. Anyway, this guy got uh, uh, convicted for uh, manslaughter, I think would be the equivalent. And that's how self-defense laws works in Sweden. Basically, they don't work. You're not allowed to defend yourself. The only ones with rights in Sweden are criminals. We have uh, silly examples of uh, criminals out on parole. Who has, a, who has a illegal, smuggled, fully automatic uh, machine gun under their bed. The police comes and finds drugs and machine guns and whatever. And he doesn't get punished because we have a system of, if you're already serving a sentence, like a suspended sentence, they basically don't get any extra time. They don't get sent to jail, they just write it off. And if you get, for example, five years, which is a lot in Sweden, I don't know what you have to do to get five years, basically rape a kindergarten or something, um, you only serve two-thirds of your time. Then you get sent free. 
And if you do a lot of different crimes, you only get sentenced for the worst offense. And uh, all the other offenses get written off. So, and it, another thing is, if you do a, if you do crime, the crime at, in January, then you might uh, get your sentence in December. And uh, while you're waiting for your sentence, you could you might be free, and you might be allowed to go free. And then you can commit other crimes that's not as severe as the first crime, and they will be written off. You're, you're basically allowed to commit lesser crimes than the one you're going to get uh, charged for. And then uh, when you have uh, your court date and you get your sentence, you might ha have to wait like a year or two years before you can serve your time. And then you're still free to commit lesser crimes because you're not going to get a sentence for that. It's called straffrabatt or uh, <laughs> sale on... Punishment <laughs> it would be the translation for that, like uh, Black Friday sale on punishment. <clears throat> That's how it works in Sweden. The criminals have all the rights, the law-abiding people have zero rights. The police is totally incompetent, they have never had this much resources in, in Sweden as they have now, and they've never been this uh, inefficient as they are in Sweden. I recently read that uh, the serious crime division in Sweden that uh, infiltrates gangs and stuff like that was shut down in 2010 because they were so corrupt and they committed so many crimes that they basically reasoned the police that they had to fire everyone. Well, they don't fire people in the police. They fire them upwards. They get positions as uh, chiefs and stuff instead of... Uh, they get better positions, better pay. They don't get to do the same thing they did. So those people uh, were totally incompetent. They managed to catch like one guy who set fire to some buildings in one town and uh, some other guy, but that's it. They had this really big case where they went to Spain to try to catch this guy they thought smuggled drugs, but he didn't apparently. And it was this big fiasco. So anyway, they shut it all down in 2010 and they haven't had any ability to catch uh, organized crime since then. It's only now that in 2015 that they're trying to rebuild this organization. Way to go, Swedish police. Totally incompetent. That's just one example. Don't get me started on the weapon licenses. Uh, uh, so yeah, the only thing they managed to do is uh, plocka pinnar. It's a Swedish expression to buff the statistics. And that's basically catch law-abiding people driving too fast and stuff like that to buff the statistics so it looks like they're actually doing something. But if you look at the actual statistics, they, <laughs> they, can't, they can't catch rapists. We have a big issue with rape, rape in Sweden and uh, they can't basically do anything. Uh, we have a lot of problems with illegal firearms in Sweden. Not legal firearms. Not e they don't even steal legal firearms, because who wants a hunting rifle, which is the majority over the legal firearms, when you can just go and buy a really cheap, fully automatic AK-47. It takes like half an hour for them to get it. Anyway, so they basically never catch anyone that shoots, shoots up stuff in Sweden. This year we had a hand grenade <laughs> problem. I think it's up to like 40 explosions with hand grenades. Amongst that, one police car with four police in it, they <laughs> threw a hand grenade under, then they set fire to the police station. It's like, it's silly. So yeah, the Swedish police is ridiculous. And they tried to fix this issue with the police this year when they basically shut down, uh, we had all different police districts, so they shut down everything, renamed the organization, all the police has to rejoin the new organization, get the new police ID and everything. <clears throat> sign a bunch of di different uh, worthless terms. It sucks to be a police in Sweden. It really, really sucks. I really feel sorry for the Swedish policeman who actually wants to do a decent job and has a great sense of duty and wants to help people because they're fucked. There's zero tolerance for uh, complaining in the police. They're, it's a really corrupt... Well, not corrupt like you bribe them, but corrupt like uh, 
you rub my back, I rub your back, and uh, you're friends with me, you get this nice position and stuff like that. <coughs> you have to know the right people to advance in the police. And uh, the regular police officer gets nothing in pay and uh, gets to do a shit ton of bullshit duties, mainly filling out paper forms and idiot things like that. So there's been a lot of demonstrations from the police. Well, they, they don't really go around with science and anything. There was one time where they refused to buff the statistics and they just parked all the squad cars where people could see them. So people actually saw that the police existed. And this uh, fall, to this year, they wrote tens of thousands of letters to the police chief and to the press just explaining their discontent with the state of the police. So yeah, if you want to be a career criminal, come to Sweden. It's basically that, uh, that way. So I think I drifted a bit from the <laughs> topic of this. So yeah, I have keys, I have my snooze, I have my cards and my cell phone. And that's it. I do have a backpack and I have some uh, necessary things if uh, all else fails in society I can at least get back to my apartment with a backpack but uh, that's not really what you have in your pockets kind of deal. So that's an EDC from Sweden. <laughs> have a nice day and don't vote socialist. <laughs>